hello, welcome. Welcome to day 10 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Let's get started. Day 10, January 10th, 2023, 365 days, Bible reading, Old Testament, Genesis 20, sorry, Genesis 21, Genesis 22, Genesis 23, New Testament, Matthew 8, 23 to 34, Matthew 9, 1 to 13, Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 7, verse 10 to 17. Old Testament, NIV version, Genesis 21, verse 1 to 34. The birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him when his son Sarah was when his son Isaac was 8 days old Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him Sarah said God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me and she added who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children yet I have borne him a son in his old age hallelujah Hagar and Ishmael sent away the child grew and was weaned and on the day Isaac was weaned Abraham held a great feast but Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had born to Abraham was mocking and she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the child, the son of the slave, into a nation also because he is your offspring early the next morning abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to hagar he set them on her shoulders and then said sent her off with the boy she went on her way and wandered into the desert of beersheba when the water in the skin was gone she put the boy under one of the bushes then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away for she thought i cannot watch the boy die and as she sat there she began to sob god heard the boy crying and the angel of god called to hagar from heaven and said to her what is the matter hagar do not be afraid god has heard the boy crying as he lies there lift the boy up and take him by the hand for i will make him into a great nation then god opened her eyes and she saw a well of water so she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink god was with the boy as he grew up he lived in the desert and became an archer while he was living in the desert of paran his mother got a wife for him from egypt the treaty at beersheba at that time abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his forces said to abraham god is with you in everything you do now swear to me here before god that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants show to me and the country where you now reside as a foreigner the same kindness i have shown to you Abraham said, I swear it. Then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized. But Abimelech said, I don't know who has done this. You did not tell me. And I heard about it only today. So Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech. And the two men made a treaty. Abraham set apart seven ewe lambs from the flock and Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs you have set apart by, your, by themselves? He replied, Accept these seven lambs from my hand as a witness that I dug this well. So that place was called Beersheba because the two men saw an oath there. 
after the treaty had been made at Beersheba, Abimelech and Fickle, the commander of his forces, returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called on the name of the Lord, the eternal God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time. Genesis 22 verse 1 to 24, Abraham tested. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he sent he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he carried and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. Hallelujah. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. Glory to God. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven. A second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Nahor's sons. Some time later, Abraham was told, Milcah is also a mother. She has born sons to your brother Nahor, who's the firstborn, was his brother, Kemuel, the father of Aram, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jidlav, and Bethuel. Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Milcah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. His concubine, whose name was Rumah, also had sons, Teba, Geham, Tahash, and Makkah. Genesis 23 verse 1 to 20, the death of Sarah. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am a foreigner and stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf, so he will send me the cave of Mac sell me the cave of Machpelah, which belongs to him, and is at the end of his field. 
ask him to sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Ephron the Hittite was sitting among his people and he replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of his city. No, my Lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the presence of my people, bury your dead. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land and he said to Ephron in their hearing, Listen to me, if you will, I will pay the full price of the field. Accept it from me so I can bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord, the land is worth 400 shekels of silver. But what is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver according to the weight current among the merchants. So Ephron's field in Machpelah near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within the borders of the field was deeded to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which is at Hebron in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. New Testament and IV version, Matthew 8, verse 23 to 34. Jesus calms the storm. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. How Hallelujah. Jesus restores two demon-possessed men. When he arrived at the other side in the region of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men came from the tombs, met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted. Have you come here to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance from there, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons begged Jesus, if you drive us out, send us into the herds of pigs. He said to them, go. So they came out and went into the pigs and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and died in the water. Those tending the pigs ran off, went into the town and reported all this, including what had happened to the demon-possessed man. Then the whole town went out to meet Jesus and when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Matthew 9 verse 1 to 13, Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, This fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins. Hallelujah. So he said to the paralyzed man get up take your mat and go home then the man got up and went home when the crowd saw this they were filled with awe and they praised god who had given such authority to man glory to god hallelujah the calling of matthew as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's boat. Follow me, he told them. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Glory to God. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 7, verse 10 to 17. My shield is God most high, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does 
not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flaming arrows. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to delusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scopes it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoil on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing the praises of the name of the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amazing. Please, if you're here and you'd like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you give your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. That is salvation in Christ 101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. Thank you for being here today. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.